you have your Bibles, open them to uh, Psalms 47. Psalms 47. Last week we looked at uh, Psalms 46, and we're going to look at the sequel. Uh, the second uh, song that um, the king wrote. The king wrote. The king was a. Uh, he liked to write write songs, and uh, this one was uh, the follow up. I guess you could say uh, part two to what was looked at last week. Psalms 46 tells the story of when Judah was all confined in the city of Jerusalem with the uh, Assyrian army just outside. Just beyond the archer's reach, they had set up camp. And they were there to uh, uh, take over. They had made an agreement with uh, Hezekiah, king of Judah. Hezekiah had gone in and stripped the silver and the gold from the, from the walls of the temple, from everywhere that they could find. But Shennacherib, the, the leader, the king of Assyria, decided it would not be good to leave an enemy behind. So he had come back to, uh, to uh, defeat them. And he tried to defeat them by discouragement. He tried to defeat them with fear. And he sent out his propaganda man to, to stand and to uh, shout out, you must open the doors of the city. We've never been defeated. We've, uh, we've overcome every enemy of us. We have defeated everyone. And you will be defeated the same way. But Hezekiah had refused a proposal of peace. Now for all the people inside the city, what awaited them was impending, what they thought was be impending doom. In Psalms 46, as they were going through the midst of the trouble, while the army was all there, in verse number 10, God told them to be still. Be still and know that I am God. The word be still means relax. It literally means take a step back, take your hands off of the control. His hope to them was just to, to be quiet in the moment and watch God and what God would do. Step back, relax, and relinquish the control. Hezekiah and Isaiah have probably spent quite a, quite a bit of time in prayer. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure that we're going to know this side of glory. How much of their prayers is what brought the victory? Just like we were not going to know how much our prayers are valued in heaven. And how much God hears, not only hears, but answers and acts upon our prayers as well. The noise of the army just outside the walls were a constant reminder to the children of Judah, the doom that they saw in front of them. The smoke that would rise from the campfires would always be smelled by the people inside the walls to remind them that they had, the army outside had never been defeated. The fire lights of their campfires at night showed a glow of gloom. To see the implements of war, the battering rams, the ladders that would be scattered so that they could lean them up against the wall and the armies could come over the wall. The slings that would take those huge boulders and throw them over the wall of the city and make, make destruction wherever they fall. The people saw those every day. They heard the noise of the army every day. They smelled the smoke of the campfires every night. They lived in constant fear as the centuries were posted on the wall. And yet God said, be still, relax, take a step back. Don't worry about it. I'm in control. I'm God. And yet, I can just imagine, as a father, we gather the family together in a room in their, their house at night and gather them all together and say, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. 
But even in this, and always acknowledge Him. He'll direct our path. He'll take care of us. Can you see the Father as He would be there with His family trying to comfort them and try to steal away a little sleep at night? And then in the morning, uh, inside the city like normal, there would be the, the beginning of movement inside the city, but something seemed strange in the pre-dawn light. Nothing was happening outside the city walls. 185,000 soldiers there, but when dawn brought the morning light, they saw no movement at all. As a matter of fact, what they began to see was the gathering of the birds of prey as they're circling around, which they always do when death is out there looming. In the quietness, Looking and not really understanding, is this a trick? Something must go on. So reports came down, and surely Hezekiah went to the wall and went up to the high tower to look out and to see exactly what it was. There were still the implements of war. They could see the, the tents and all the things that were out there, but no movement at all. Most likely a spy was sent out to see exactly what it was that they were facing. The campfires were out. Things had the fair coldness of the morning. And then they probably heard this. They're dead, as the spy probably shouted out. Who's dead? The army's dead. The army? All of them are dead. Could this be? As they begin their day and they look and they start looking out there and no movement at all, could it be the army is dead? 185,000. The, the troops that were there to come and to conquer are now laying dead. Generals, the troops, even the Rabshakeh. Remember in 2 Kings 18 last week, we talked about the, that propaganda artist of, of the king of Assyria. And he would shout to them from the walls, don't trust in Isaiah, don't, or excuse, don't listen to Hezekiah. Don't let them tell you to trust in Jehovah God. Jeho no God has ever defeated us. The great king of Assyria, he is here. But now the Rabshakeh lays dead too. Could you imagine how they would feel when everything that they had known was, was doom and dread? And now with a short word, everything had changed. You know, this happened one other time in Scripture. God wanted to deliver his people. They were down in slavery in Egypt. And the last plague, by the way, is still celebrated today. It's called Passover. They were instructed to, to get a lamb without spot or blemish and to get it on the 10th day of the month and keep it until the 14th day of the month. Then on the 14th day of the month, they were to slay the, the lamb and take a hyssop and, and dip the hyssop into the blood and put it over the doorpost of their home. And they were to roast that lamb and they were to do it in full clothes, standing with their sandals on their feet, with the staff in their hands, ready to go because God would deliver. Because God said he would come and he would send an angel. And he would, every time he would find the, the door on the post of the home, he would pass over and death would not enter the home. But Exodus 12 tells us that every home in Egypt had a death inside the home because it killed everyone who was of the firstborn. It was a strategic, specific word from God, and when the death angel came, he did exactly, nothing more, nothing less. He did exactly what God had commanded him to do. And all over Egypt, the firstborns were dead because the blood of the sacrificial lamb had not covered the home. You see, God can do amazing and mighty things specifically for the circumstances that every one of us are in. He can kill one or he can kill all. He can take care of the small thing, maybe the thing that you don't know that anybody else knows, the things that you've been walking and dealing with, or he 
can take care of it all. One night, listen to me now, one angel changed it all. I wonder what it was like when they started to realize that what the spy said was true. They're dead. They're gone. It's over. It's done. I wonder what it was like when it began to spread through the city. Maybe the children began to run in the streets and to shout. Maybe it went to all the people as they began to, to lift up their voice and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. But you know, look in verse 1 of Psalms 47. The second part written by Isaiah, I mean, excuse me, Hezekiah. Oh, clap your hands. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the voice of of triumph. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. You know, we all worship if we love God. We do it in a thousand different ways. I actually believe that when the father probably gathered his, his wife and his children in the home that night with doom just outside the walls of the city, when he gathered them together and said, trust in the Lord, I think that was worship. Let's hold hands and pray to Jehovah God together. I think that was worship. When they probably took some of the fresh water from the spring of Gihon and, and it got refreshed into their body and said, God, thank you for this water. I believe that's worship. When they took a little bit of food, and it might have been to them, they thought, hey, this may be the last meal I have. This may be the last one, but let's give thanks. It's worship. When they saw someone else that may have looked down and they said, don't let your heart be saddened. Trust in the Lord. I believe it's worship. When they went to their jobs every day and did what was before them, the next place of obedience, I believe it was worship. But listen to me, church. There needs to be time that our heart needs to open up and express the beauty of what God has done for us. He says to them, clap your hands. Why is it that we can shout for everything else, but we can't shout for God? Worship needs to be the expression of your soul. If you're in love, let it be known with your words and with your tone. Be excited for God. We can be awfully refined, can't we? We can be awfully dignified, can't we? I guarantee you, one second in the glory, we're going to know exactly what it's all about. One second when we breathe our last breath here and we breathe our first breath there. Can you just pause for a moment? What's it going to be like? We look with a great big wow. And that feeling that overcomes us and the people that we would see and know and the brightness of his glory. I don't think we're going to give it one of those. I mean, when we start our first five steps, in, I don't believe we're going to give it one of those. Well, it's exactly the way I expected. <laughs> well, glory. Maybe we even give a big, great big uh, praise God. Maybe even pat our foot a little bit. Come on. There's times when our worship is quiet. There's times when our heart is overflowing. I remember when my mom passed. Really, my heart wasn't sad because I knew she was in heaven. And I didn't really grieve for it until I got up to preach her funeral. And I stood behind the pulpit and the tears began to flow. And I just stood there and was overflowed with all that was going on. And I really couldn't quit. But you know one thing I knew? I knew that my mom wasn't feeling that. My mom was in glory. My mom felt better than she ever had in all of her life. All of those things that were holding her back, she could, for the first time, listen to me now, for the first time, she could express her heart exactly the way it could and should have been. 
And yet, we get the, ex we get the opportunity to do that today. I'm just not sure that we take advantage of it. Hezekiah says, clap your hands unto the Lord. Shout to God. Blow the, sh the, the, the trumpet of triumph. Let it be expressed. Let it be known. We can go to a football game and we can be excited. I tell you what, there's something that means so very much more. I'm not saying we work it up. That's performance. God help us know. As a matter of fact, I want to give you something. And as I look at our worship today, I want to remind you of something. We need to clap our hands unto the Lord, shout unto God. But in our modern church today, it used to be the holy amen. And people would say amen in church. And if you so do so, if that's of the Holy Spirit, amen. But I know that... Uh, the modern day amen is this, as we clap our hands. Let me just remind you of something, though. If someone gets up and they sing a song and they bring glory under God, and you we all clap, let's just make sure that we're not clapping for the performance of the talent of the singer. Let's make sure that we clap unto our Lord, our God. Amen? I guarantee you the singer would tell you that. I guarantee you, someone came to me after the service this morning and they, they, they were bragging on me. And I said, oh no, that was good scripture. And they said, well, it was a good job. And I said, no, give praise unto the Lord. You don't take credit for that which is of God. If God's ever done anything in any of our lives, let's give him honor and credit for it. Amen? He deserves it. Clap unto God. He is worthy of our praise. Every day we should take the opportunity to let him know that we love him. But we should be excited about God. As the preacher once said, if you're so excited, tell your face. Amen? Let it know as well. Be happy unto the Lord is really what he is saying. He's worthy of what he... God had done a miracle in front of their eyes. Give him glory for it. Look what he says in verse 2. For the Lord Most High is awesome. The Lord Most High. El Elyon. The first time we find this in Scripture is when Abraham was there. Remember when Lot had separated himself from Abraham and he had gone down to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, but the, the five kings from the east had come and, and they, had just, they had taken over those cities? So Abraham took his 200 trained servants and he went after those that had taken Lot, his nephew, and he found them there and he began the battle and he chased them for 200 miles, routing the enemy. And when he came back home, he gave praise and glory and honor unto the new God, that, the new understanding of the God that he served. El Elyon, there are many gods he would say of the world, but he was the most high God. He knew the one that he prayed to was the one and only God. He knew the one that he served. He knew when he came back from battle and give, gave a praise, a, pr a worship of an offering unto Mechizedek. He was doing it unto the Lord Most High. Hezekiah said, listen here, for the Lord Most High is awesome. The King James renders that badly because we say the word terrible different. They said the Lord Most High is terrible, but really the word means awe-inspiring. I mean, there's some times we look at God and go, wow. There's some times we look at God and we're just amazed, and we should be. This is one of the greatest weeks, I believe, in our calendar and here in the United States of America. We have so very much. We are so very blessed. And we should take a week. I appreciate it. I believe it was President Eisenhower who set this day aside and said, we should thank God together as a nation for all that he's done for us. I am so grateful for the attitude of gratitude that we're going to see this week. And we should do that. But listen, every day that we wake up, every day that God, the Lord Jesus, if you're a Christian, he lives within your heart. If you're a believer, he's there for you. He loves you. He is there to be your shield and your defender. He is to be your ever-present help in time of trouble. Understand and know that, that we have a God who is so wonderful, high and lifted up on the throne of glory, and he deserves our love. 
He deserves our praise. He wants to hear it from you. Do you think he's great? Is he all inspiring to you? Does he have competition for your love? Or do you set him apart in your life and say, oh, Jesus, it wouldn't be worth anything if it were not for your grace and your mercy. He says, for the Lord most high is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. I, I like this because it, in 2 Kings 18, when the Rabshakeh is, is speaking to the Jews uh, where they could hear him on the walls, he says, listen, the great king of Assyria has never been defeated. Hezekiah says, the great king Jehovah has never been defeated. He says, Shenanakrib, He's going to come and he's going to overcome all. But I'm here to tell you, God's already overcome. Are we going to recognize it or not? He is king over all the earth and every knee should bow before him. He says he is a great king over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us, all the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance. The Rabshakeh said, hey, if you will open the doors of the city and come out, the king of Assyria has plans for you, and he'll be kind to you. But I want you to know the king of glory has plans for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for good, not for evil. Listen to me now. To give you a future, that's coming, but a hope for today. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. But heaven is for God's children. Those who want to live in their sins and die in their sins, that's their choice. But God's got a different inheritance for us. Look what it says here. He says, he will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob. I love this. He didn't say the excellence of Israel. Y'all remember Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob? You remember his, what his name meant? Schemer. Schemer. Now that's the opposite of be still and know that I am God. Because you see, what, what Jacob was known for was manipulation. He didn't take his hands off of it. Everything that he had done in life was to manipulate it for his, what he thought was his good. Until he got to a place where he wrestled with an angel all night and that angel wouldn't turn loose of him and he finally realized who he was, who, who he was wrestling with and he wouldn't turn loose of the angel. And he said, I won't turn loose of you until you bless me. And God said, what's your name? What's your name? To remind him. And he said, Jacob, the, the schemer, the liar, the cheat. And he said, I'm going to bless you. You'll no longer be Jacob, you'll be Israel, my people, the leader of my people. Listen to me, aren't you grateful that God takes broken down control freaks like us and loves us, gives us grace and mercy, has plans for us, plans for good, plans to bless us, plans to overflow us with joy, plans to do so many more things. I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, I hath not seen the things that God has prepared for those who love him, to those who are the called. Oh, listen to me, my friends. The excellence of Jacob, whom he, that is God, loves. The word excellence there means the pride or the joy of Jacob, whom God loves. Aren't you grateful that God loves dirty, rotten sinners like us? Aren't you grateful that Jesus came to save, deliver from impending doom of sin like our Lord? When you think about that, listen to me now. When I talked about we in one second in the glory, the one thing you know when you're basking the glory of heaven, one day when we will be there, it's all because of Jesus and his love. He is an overwhelming, overcoming God. Praise his holy name. And to that, Hezekiah says that word once again. 
Selah. Wow. What do you think about that? What a God we serve. Then look in verse 5. He says, God has gone up with a shout. All the people, the Jews, understood that this was what is called a messianic psalm. It was written by Hezekiah as the second part of of chapter 46 to talk about when God delivered the children of Israel from the harm of the king of Assyria, killed them all in one day. But he also talks about a day that would be coming in the future when God himself would intervene for us. You see, it looked pretty dark and dreary on Calvary. It looked pretty difficult when he was there, beaten, bleeding, to the point where he thought it was over. It looked like God was going to lose. Satan thought he had won when Jesus said those words, it is finished. And then said, under thy hands I commend my spirit, and gave up his spirit and died. And everybody's heart was defeated and broken. They put him in a barred tomb. But on Resurrection Sunday, everything changed. Life came back. Death was defeated. And Jesus stood with the scars of the battle upon him. Yes. But he stood high. And victorious with the glory of God once again. Forty days later, he went out just outside the city of Jerusalem to the Mount of Olives, raised his hands, the law of gravity was suspended, and he ascended back to glory. Acts 1, those angels said to them, Why stand you gazing up in heaven? This same Jesus that you saw go up will come back in like manner. And we're told what it's going to look like when he comes back. He's going to come back with the, with the blowing of the trumpet, the shout of God. The dead in Christ will be raised, and we who are alive and remain, if we are. And by the way, I'm not too sure the rapture's not close. We who are alive and remain will be caught up, changed in the twinkling of an eye, to meet the Lord in the air, to go back and be with the Lord. Listen to me now. I wonder what it was like. We know what it was like from the first-hand account of what it was when he left. I wonder what it was like when he came into heaven. When a king was coming in, they would gather all together and there would be a parade of shouting. And they would clap into him and they would shout for the new king that was coming. Can you imagine the one who was naked on the cross, who they wrapped with a garment and put him in the tomb, but he was resurrected with the regal glow, glow of the glory of God upon him as he had those robes upon him and he goes home and they're shouting think about it Jesus Jesus and the choirs of heaven play and the trumpets and he comes to the throne and the Bible tells us he sits down at the right hand of the father with the mercy seat with the blood to be applied so that salvation can come for you and I. But look what he says here. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of the trumpet. He has ascended. He is watching over us right now. He knows every hair on your head. He knows every thought in your heart. He knows every sin that you've committed. He knows the blood that has been applied. He knows the plans. He knows Satan's plans. He has overcome Satan's plans. God is good there for you. God wants to overflow you and bless you with his anointing and love. Sing praises unto God, it says. Sing praises, verse 6. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. Sing praises to the king of all the earth. Sing praises. Listen, I love this now. With understanding. Because of where you've come. Because of what you've gone through. Because of knowing your failures. And yet, knowing his love. Knowing the gloom, smelling the smoke of defeat, but having God come in and rescue you and bring you peace. 
To know that there's not one place you can go that his love is not there ahead of time. There's not one sin that you can commit that his love cannot forgive. To know that there's not one thing that comes before you that he hasn't already prayed for in protection over you. Sing praises. Sing praises to God for his goodness. Sing praises to God because he is high and lifted up. God has given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those in earth, those under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Sing praises. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love him from the darkness and light the light of his love come in. Be changed in his goodness. Give him that which he deserves. He is the undefeated champion of the world. Nothing can come between. He is high in our hearts. He says here, the princes of the people have gathered together. The people of the God of Abraham, his covenant people. The shield of the earth belongs to him. The deliverance of God belongs to him. He is greatly exalted. I don't know, uh, as the song I Can Only Imagine goes, I don't know what it will be like when I'm there. I may be quiet. I may may do back somersaults. I may, well, the Bible says there's no tears, but that's in the new heaven and the new earth. I might just come into the heaven that is there, and when I see that throne, my heart is going to be squeezed with his love And I'll just be able to express it. It may be choked out and just say, thank you, Lord. But the one thing I know I'm going to do is I'm going to bow my heart. I'm going to lift my love to the one who is high and exalted. He is triumphant. He is victorious. He's the winner. And I am his. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from your heart. He wants to hear from your disappointment. He wants to hear from you when you say, I couldn't have made it without you, but I'm here because of you. There are times that you're going to be still and quiet. There are going to be times that you can't choke out a word. Words just won't flow. But there's going to be times that you're on the mountaintop and you're going to be clapping your hands and you're going to be, get the shofar, blow the trumpet of triumph, for he is king. He'll accept all of our worship. But listen, I don't care what anybody else thinks. I care what he thinks. He wants to hear from you. Right now, this morning, he wants to hear your heart. He wants to hear your thoughts. He wants to hear your love. Every knee will bow that day. I just want to know, what about this day? This day, as you face the enemies, as you see the defeat, the doom that looks like it's inevitable that is coming, can you trust the Lord today? Will you worship him today? He wants to hear from you. We sing, I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh, Lord. If you say it from your heart, it'll be just fine. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. 
I exalt thee, O Lord. Bow your heads right now. Look to heaven, to the one that's on the throne. He's high and lifted up. He is wonderfully exalted. Can you say it? Can you join? He wants to hear it from you. What are your thoughts when you look to the Lord? I exalt thee, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, O Lord, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, I exalt thee. Oh, Lord, for Thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted all above all gods. Sing it with me. For Thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. I exalt Thee, I exalt Thee, I exalt Thee, O Lord. I exalt thee, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, O Lord. Father, this moment belongs to you. It doesn't belong to us. Lord, you've just invited us to be a part of it. You've let us come in and join this song of praise. Father, there are, no, there are no alternatives. There are no rivals. You are God. You are high and lifted up. Lord, you, are, you stand tall among all the, the places of, of heaven today. Lord, nothing compares to you. And Lord, when we think of our life, it must be a life of praise. It must be a life of thanksgiving for who you are and for what you've done. Father, hear our hearts today, O oh God, as we sing praises to you. Accept our worship, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray.